Hello students, in this video lecture, we shall have a discussion of the second text in Unit 1, which is A Comedy, The Tempest by William Shakespeare. First, let's have a look at the list of characters. The first important character is, of course, Prospero. He is the protagonist of his play. He was the rightful Duke of Milan. His brother Antonio seized his title and property, and Prospero was exiled with his daughter and eventually found refuge on an island. Miranda is his daughter. Antonio is Prospero's younger brother, who is now the Duke of Milan. He convinces Sebastian to murder his brother, the King of Naples. Then there's another character, Ariel. He is actually a spirit of the air. He assists Prospero in seeking retribution over his enemies. And the similar character is Caliban. He is the offspring of the witch Sycorax. Prospero has made Caliban his servant or slave, and in response, Caliban plots to murder Prospero. Ferdinand. He is the son of the King of Naples. Alonso, the King of Naples. Sebastian, Alonso's brother. Gonzalo, an elderly counselor who saves Prospero's and Miranda's lives when they are exiled. Stefano, the King's butler. Trinculo, the King's jester. Francisco and Adrian, two of the King's lords. And finally, a boatswain, the ship's petty officer. Let us have a quick plot summary. The Tempest is set on an island somewhere near Italy where Prospero, the one-time Duke of Milan, and his beautiful daughter Miranda live with a sprite called Ariel and a strange wild man called Caliban. Prospero is a powerful magician who creates a storm or tempest that sets the scene for the play. In the events that follow, we see a plot to murder the King of Naples, a drunken scheme to kill Prospero, and a romance between Miranda and the King's son, Ferdinand. In the end, everyone is forgiven and they all set sail for home. Now, the auction action progresses with the following series of events. A ship is caught in a tempest and begins to sink. Prospero tells Miranda that he caused the storm and explains how they ended up on the island because of his brother's betrayal. Ariel fetches Ferdinand, who falls in love with Miranda. Antonio and Sebastian plot to kill Alonso, the king of Naples. The ship's jester and butler meet Caliban and feed him alcohol. Caliban suggests that they should kill Prospero and Ariel over here. Prospero uses magic to scare Alonso and spoil Caliban's plot. Prospero finally forgives the passengers for their former betrayals. Let's have an analysis of this play. Some of the main themes in the play include, firstly, that of freedom. Now, throughout the play, we see examples of characters seeking their freedom and often experiencing the opposite, that is imprisonment. Prospero and Miranda, for example, have been trapped on the island for 12 years. When they first arrived, Prospero rescued Ariel from a prison that the witch Sycorax had locked him in. Ariel becomes Prospero's servant and asks early on in the play when he might be granted his freedom. He is indeed granted his wish in the end. Caliban is another character who lacks freedom. Prospero threatens him with punishments if he does not do his work. However, Caliban seems destined to be enslaved. When he meets Stefano, he bows down at his feet and promises to be his loyal servant. Prospero's very last words in the play are, I quote, set me free, unquote. This is from Act 5 of the epilogue, which shows the importance of this theme to the play. This brings us to the second theme of the play, which is empathy and forgiveness. The events of the play unfold with an act of betrayal, usurping and cruelty. However, as the plot progresses, Miranda seems to have a very natural sense of empathy. Prospero, on the other hand, seems to learn empathy as the play progresses. When we first see him with Ariel, the spirit is asking for his liberty, which Prospero has promised. However, instead of showing understanding for his servant, Prospero seems to be angry. He reminds Ariel that he rescued the spirit from his prison in a tree. Later in the play, Prospero becomes softer in his manners towards Ariel. When Ariel tells him he should feel sorry for the king and his followers, Prospero takes his advice. Instead of taking revenge, Prospero offers forgiveness in the end. The third important theme in this play is that of nature versus nurture. The theme of nature versus nurture is presented on a number of levels in The Tempest. There is the natural beauty of the island that Caliban tells us about with, I quote, sounds and sweet airs, unquote. This is from Act 3, Scene 2. Then there is the comparison between what is natural and what is civilized throughout the play. Miranda represents a natural innocence and naivete, whereas Caliban represents something savage, uncivilized, and quote, unquote, unnatural. Gonzalo, in Act 2, Scene 2, talks about a commonwealth where nature and men would work together more harmoniously. 
At the same time, the supposedly civilized men shipwrecked on the island are mostly shown as greedy drunkards and traitors. Now, this brings us to a very important issue that we are going to discuss. This is also going to be connected to the next unit of this course, which is the post-colonial reception of the tempest. Until the advent of post-colonial criticism, Anglo-American critics frequently read the tempest as an allegory of artistic creation. Traditionally, Prospero's art represented the world of civility and learning, in contrast to the quote-unquote natural black magic of Sycorax, Caliban's mother. After the decolonization movements of the 1960s and 1970s, Africans began to revise and mobilize the play in defense of Caliban's rights to the island on which he is born prior to Prospero's arrival. Caliban's assertion in the play, I quote, this island's mine, by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me, unquote, became the rallying cry for African and Arab Caribbean intellectuals from the 60s to the 70s. Amy Cesar, a black writer and activist from Martinique, rewrote the play in 1969 in French, set in a colony, a prototype of Caribbean or African setting, in the shores of resistance. It celebrates Caliban's verbal attack on Prospero and questions the latter's claims to the island. Césaire's play focuses on Caliban's resistance to Prospero's control over language. Kenyan writer Mugi Wathiongo's novel A Grain of Wheat, published in 1967, is based upon The Tempest as well. It examines Prospero's colonizing drives and methods. By the 1980s, Anglo-American readings of the play as well began to join in such interrogations of Prospero's rule in empathy for Caliban. Miranda and Prospero's justifications of their enslavement of the savage Caliban whose quote-unquote wild race lacks natural goodness are strongly challenged in post-colonial readings of this play. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you.